talk to you guys about the Haber-Bosch process. This is an exhibit we have at the IQ Hub for our chemistry fans. And even if you haven't had chemistry yet, I'm gonna walk you through a couple things so you can feel more comfortable with this exhibit. So anytime you're doing chemistry, you have reactants and you have products. And so for the Haber-Bosch process, there's several reactants, they're on the left side. You have water and methane and air, they go into the process. And obviously there's a lot of steps along the way. You might learn about this in your high school chemistry classes. But the main thing is with heat and pressure and maybe a catalyst, which speeds things up, you end up with a product. And here our product is ammonia. And so that is a nitrogen product that plants need to help them be healthy and strong. And so I guess the biggest thing about the Haber-Bosch process is that it's helped us industrialize and make more nitrogen products for our plants so they can be healthy and strong. This is a fun activity you can do at home. And today we're going to use beets, cabbage, kale, and carrots with a juicer. I'm sure you could use a blender too, some way to extract the juices or the pigments from these vegetables. And then if you want to add an extra step, you can use cornstarch to make it a little thicker. But we're going to use these vegetables, things that people might be growing in their gardens, to make paint. And you may not think it, but these beets are going to have a really cool, vibrant color, pretty close to what you're seeing when you cut one open. The red cabbage, however, that one ends up being purple, which is really interesting because it's called a red cabbage, but that's gonna be a cool color as well. Kale, you can guess what that one's gonna turn out to be. Yep, green. And then carrots are orange. So these four things make a really cool household paint project that you guys could do with your kiddos. Even adults, we've had high school students do this and they've made some really cool drawings. And if you just use the vegetables, it's more of a watercolor. But if you use the starch, it is thicker. The coolest thing about this activity is that when you're dealing with these vegetables, they will be more vibrant in color if the soil is healthier. And so this is a good lesson or activity to tie in with chemistry. And if you're dealing this with elementary, middle school, or high school students, you can talk about the pigments or the dyes that we are using in the paint and how they are a certain color based on the ingredients or the chemical composition of these vegetables thanks to chemistry. So beets, beets have a thing called betalain, and this is what gives them the reddish color that pigment is gonna be really cool on paper. Red cabbage, we actually found, is part of the anthocyanin family, and that gives you a purplish, or more like a dark blue. We first tried blueberries, but they did not work very well. The red cabbage is the ticket. Kale has chlorophyll, which you guys have heard with photosynthesis, the green pigment, and that's gonna look really good on paper too. And then carrots has that beta carotene or that ingredient that helps you with your eyesight too. A lot of people eat carrots. But if you want to get specific on the healthy component of all these, they do have different positives and benefits and things that pretty much every family should try to incorporate some of these in their diet. The brighter in color, usually the healthier the food is for you. So if you can get more vibrant color from a really nutrient-rich soil, then you definitely know you're eating healthy. So to get this started, you've noticed that I've cut up the beets into smaller pieces. That way it will fit into my juicer and the cabbage. The kale will go in pretty easy, and so will the carrots. So to get you started, like I said, you could use a blender. We have a juicer. It's gonna get a little loud. This just has an on-off. Maybe you have other ones that have different speeds but you would put in your vegetable and you probably want to make sure that you can get the top on there because it alleviates the mess factor in your kitchen and then people aren't putting their fingers in there too. So we'll give it a shot. There's my top. to use 
several carrots, several bunches of kale, several beets. These were ones that I found in the store, but people might have leftovers in their garden. The pulp, the leftover that we don't need for today, this is great food for your worms if you're doing the worm composting called vermicomposting. And like I said, the juice, you can drink it. For carrots, it's good for your eyesight. Lots of people like to have smoothies and add these ingredients perhaps, but today we're gonna use it for painting. Our carrots have been juiced and they came out a really nice orange color. Probably put six carrots in this juicer to get about a half of a mason jar full of the juice. Like I said, you can thicken it later if you don't like the watercolor, but both ways look nice. The biggest challenge for this project or activity is to make sure you clean your juicer after you do the carrots because it might mess with your color, your pigment for your next vegetable. There's a little bit left over, but hopefully it won't make a difference. So we're gonna try kale next. So the kale is now into the juicer. And one thing I do want to remind people is to make sure you unplug your juicer when you are cleaning it, or working with it, and never stick your hands in there. That's why I have this plunger. So now I'm gonna push in that kale, that leafy Hi. vegetable. Do you wanna help me, Randy? Oh. And turn it on. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a band on the plunger. Okay, pick it up and down, up and down. There you go, we get the last bit out. This was one whole bundle of kale. Let's turn it on, man. And notice all the beautiful green colors that came through. This is what we can feed the worms too, Randy. Oh. But Kale, a whole bundle, does not give us very much juice. So we would need a lot more kale in order to make what we did with six carrots. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of carrot juice. Yep. Not so much kale. But we can try another type. Gotta clean it first. Okay, good idea. So now you can see the kale compared to the carrots. Carrots have a lot more juice in them for six carrots versus one bundle of kale. So you might wanna buy two or three yep, bundles yep, of kale yep, at the store yep, if you're trying to yep, make yep. them even. What do you think so far, Randy? Yeah. You like this? I kinda don't like green yucky stuff. Oh, you don't like the smell of it? Mm -mm. Remember, you have to watch your fingers, okay? Mm. Okay, got our plunger. Got it Plunger's plugged in. Ready. Cleaned up, turn it on. Me do it. This one is our red cabbage. All right, turn it off. Wow, that's a lot. Now, as we told Randy, remind you guys too, it's sharp, so you never stick your hands in here. This is the plunger. You have to wait until it's calmed down when you turn it off. To put some more in. Put more in, Ran. So he's putting in his red cabbage just a little at a time because we have to make sure we get the plunger in there so we can protect our fingers. Some more. And then once it's loaded up, we can squish it down with the plunger and turn it on. And even though this looks purple right now, like I said, it's called red cabbage, it looks purple, it ends up kind of being like a dark blue. We'll see how much juice we get from one red cabbage. This will taste it yummy. So now you can see the red cabbage in the mason jar. And the red cabbage, one red cabbage gives us a lot more juice than the kale in one bundle of the six carrots. So you're going to have to plan accordingly based on how much paint you want. This is our beets. We're going to try beets next. Ready, Randy? Get up here. Okay, hand on the finger.
to wait till the juicer stops spinning before you take the lid off and put more fruit or vegetables in because it will just go everywhere. It's not. It's not. See how much we get from three beets. After we've done doing all our juicing, we have a lot in all four of our jars, but maybe not so much in the kale jar. Remember, this was three beets. This was one head of red cabbage, one big bundle of kale, a bunch of little leaves in there, but might need some more, and about six carrots. So that gives you an idea of color and the amount you would get in your mason jar. And we can try that when we paint to see a watercolor picture. Some people do a drawing and then add the paint later to show, or some people just start with the paint but it's a really cool art project. It deals with chemistry, the soil, the nutrients from the soil and the plants. Talks about healthy lifestyles. This is a really cool lesson that incorporates all of that. And if you do want to make it thicker, like I said, we can try the cornstarch and show you what that difference looks like as well. It just depends on what you want it to look like. And if you're doing the vermicomposting, look at all this leftover from my vegetables. And this would be great for my worms. Even though you might not have a very big vermicomposting bin or a lot of worms, you can put this in the freezer, freeze it. So there's a lot of water and moisture in here and it will stay very good for the worms. Then you just break off a chunk from your freezer, give it to your worms, sprinkle it around. This is awesome worm food. So hopefully you have fun doing this part, but you're gonna have more fun doing the painting part. This is the paint after it's been heated up in a little pan and added some starch. My partner Ernie says pretend like you're making gravy. And so if you check it out, the red cabbage is definitely thicker than it was without the gravy. Beets and kale added a little more gravy, I should say cornstarch, to make this paint like a gravy for kale. But the carrots got the most cornstarch. Look how thick it is. So now we're gonna paint with it and see how this makes a difference from where it was when it was like a watercolor. Here's the two paintings that we did with the vegetable paint. This one is where the juice just came out of the vegetables with a juicer and like I told you it was watercolor. And this one, we took that juice that looked like watercolor and heated it up in a pan with some cornstarch and this made the thicker paint. So you can kind of see there are some differences. The watercolor you can see more of the lines through the painting as far as the actual picture and then because this one is thicker it does cover some up. That is the beets. And then the red cabbage that was supposed to be like a darker blue, kind of a purple. I tried for the water, for the watercolor and the clouds. So I did the clouds over in the thicker paint and as you can see, and the eyeballs on the turtle, does not look blue or even a darker color. This one comes out more like my cornstarch. So maybe I had too much cornstarch, but you can see a difference definitely in that color. The orange, Orange is a little more see-through on this watercolor painting. Orange is thicker here. I kind of like the orange better with the cornstarch. And then the green, you can tell the green watercolor versus the green that's thicker. The green can get clumpy, but it's up to you. You can try both ways. This one has one less step because you don't have to heat it up in a pan with cornstarch. This one does take a little longer to get to the end result but they definitely look a little different. Both are fun and both come from vegetables that you can grow in your garden and you send through juicer. Really cool lesson. Give it a try.